Hi, welcome back. Cam here again to take you through some more painting. Um, and this is what picture we're going to be working on today. So I hope you enjoy it. And I'll just introduce all the materials that I'm going to be using for it to get you set up. So first of all, this is my palette. And we're going to be using white. It's usually always titanium white we use. And this is acrylics. So I've got two blues out here. And I've got Prussian blue and I've got uh, Ballard Blue and they're both a sort of a kind of greeny blue tinge through them so we can do these nice kind of aqua tones here just to give this kind of strong blue um, and I've also got Serenium Blue for the sky and it's also reflected in the water as well so if you've not got Ballard Blue or Prussian Blue you'll have, a, you'll have something in your set that's nearest to a sort of a greeny petrol and blue so that's what you're going for. And if you don't have it, you can just add some of the serenium blue along with like an ultramarine just to make it a wee bit more green. You can even add a wee bit of field green into it as well. Okay, and then we've got a wee bit of lemon. We've got nice wee creamy touches around about the sunlight there. And also in the wee sort of transparent bit of the water here. And we've got a nice light green for our grasses, for our sandings at the front there and a wee bit of shadow with the burnt, the burnt umber and a little bit of crimson now I've put crimson in because uh, I was trying to stick to a sort of basic red that you probably do have in your set of paints that you get uh, I think there's a couple of reds in it actually so crimson's quite a strong one where you can mix up uh, yellows into it to make more oranges or whatever or even weaken it with white okay so that's what we're doing with that so that's, that's all the materials you need that and your brushes. I'll talk about the brushes in a minute. And you've got your tissues and your water. I've just got a wee extra palette here in case I do mix up any colours. I can show you how I got there, how I got it. Right, so this is your brushes. Get a wee flat brush. This in there. I'll get it to me a second. Right, so you should have four brushes and if you've got your pack, you'll probably be presented with a set like this. So this is your big brush that I use for the sky, big areas in the water and even the sand dunes at the bottom and lots of things like that. That gives you quick coverage quite quickly. You've got that and then you've got a round brush, something that will be something between that size and that size, it doesn't really matter. This is like a hole here where it's kind of bristly and you can apply the paint much quicker and you get much quicker coverage with it as well. But this is a nice, these are nice wee smoothie brushes. They're good because I've got points on them so they're good for detail and they're also good for smoothing out little bits as well. And also this is the flat brush which again I always call my wee magic brush, it's like my pencil. This is my brush that I do all my wee sort of lines with and detail and marking out things with, so use that for everything. And again, you get a wee detail brush just in case you want to get in later on the little bits of detail. Okay, so that's what you've got. Um, now I think the adults are going to have these flat brushes, but if you don't have a flat brush, I'm sure you're going to put the flat brush in your set, but if you didn't and you ended up with one of these, it's absolutely fine because it just, spaces out and does your sky just the same. Right, so we're going to get started. Oh, and the other thing is as well, you can use a little palette knife if you like, because it's quite good for doing the grasses here. You can use your brush for that as well. But if you don't have a palette knife, you could use like a wee plastic card or, or even the edge of a wee disposable plastic knife or something like that, it works as well. But there's all sorts of ways we can get that, even on the end of your brush, just putting it on with your brush and scraping it through the end of your brush. You can get that out it's quite easy. Okay, so we're just going to get started. So I'm going to start with my wee drawing brush, which is this, and I've always have a wee tissue in my hand so that I'm not working with too much water. So I'm going to dip into the water and I just always start with the palest blue that you've got because that gives you a nice, uh, you don't, you can keep this a wee bit watery, but that gives you a nice piece of line that's strong enough and you can sometimes use it as shadows because it's quite a neutral colour. Okay, so as usual, I usually just, um, this is just my way of marking out your, your board. You just find the middle point of your board there, just put a wee sort of mark there. 
and the same there. So you can see when I do that, it's not quite the middle again, the horizon, so it's just up a wee bit for the middle. But as long as I've found the middle and I go to the middle there, I know that it's up a wee bit from the middle. So I'm talking about there, probably for the horizon. So just a little dotted line right along there, just to keep that right. And on this one, unlike the last one that I did, this, this is a nice straight horizon. So just when we finish this, you can just measure with your brush right along to see if it's straight and that's one should be making sure it's straight. So for the now I'm just going to take a kind of watery blue and take this right across here. Your big brush is good for this too. Sometimes the bigger brush you can actually get the line straighter because sometimes with a small brush you've just been a bit too footery. So you can just start footing about it, but that's okay, that doesn't need to be perfect to now. It's just a guideline. So, as usual, I'm just going to forget all the bottom, the now, and I'm going to start from the top and work my way down. Okay, so here goes the big brush and a little bit of water. Lots of white, and I'll just put a wee tiny, tiny bit of blue in the now. And I just want to get as much coverage on the board. And if I can get as much white as I can on there, that helps me to put these colours on straight onto the, the painting rather than trying to mix them here. I know one or two I might mix. But if you've got a white base and it's still wet, your colours just sit lovely on it, nice pastel tones, and you get there quicker. You get the colour you're looking for quicker doing that way. So, what I'll do so that you can see it because it's quite pale now, I've got a bit more blue in it just so that you can see where I'm going. And that blue is nice, that's, uh, that's just serenium blue that's on there. But remember, put loads of white. Yeah. And if you ground in little circles like that on your canvas, you're sure to fill in all the little greens and that gives you good coverage. And so other colours that you sit on top will sit much nicer because you've got a nice space on there. So nice circular movements with that. So far, so good. So I just want to get as much of this in as I can, you know. Now, there's little bits of creamy bits here, and I'm just going to sort of mark out where that's going to be on this part of my picture. So if I go like halfway down there, all this action is in the middle, the bottom part of that. So I'm just going to get a wee marker there so that I know that I'm in the middle there, and I know that I want to keep all my creamy colours and all that down there for the, the sun coming through. So that means that I can fill this bit in a bit more. Uh, and it doesn't have to be a straight line, something that can come down with that. So just check that your board's well covered. And it doesn't need the same shade of blue all the way down either. I tend to make my skies a wee bit darker for the most part at the top. And then when you come down and it hits the light, it gives you a wee bit more distance as if you can look right through there with a wee bit of light. So, let's see how we got on with this. So I'm now going to put some little bits of, um, before I do that, I'll put some little bits of pink in that, which will hit the blue and I'll turn into a little bit of lilac. Now, the crimson, you just have to watch for the crimson. Crimson's really strong, so I always put a little bit of white in it. This will be really strong, even though I've got that white base down, it's still quite strong. So I'm just going to put little bits like that. See, that's really quite strong. I'm just going to mix it. You don't have to use your fingers, that's just a habit I've got. But if you do that while it's wet, you get nice subtle clouds in there. And I might make it a wee bit stronger, but it's quite nice, a wee bit stronger, that you can see it a wee bit more. Um, but you can use a brush to do this, you don't have to use your fingers if you don't want to. I just feel a little bit more in control of the 
the consistency of using my fingers. I can tell if it's dry or wet and how it's going to blend in. Whereas I sometimes don't see that with the brush. So this wee lilac is just kind of sitting on top of the blue, so I'm not trying to hide the blue, I'm just trying to put wee tones through it. So you can see this wee sort of turquoise greeny colour coming back through there as well, so I'll leave that wee bit for that and that'll, that'll be quite nice next to that pink. So maybe take a wee bit of that pink and put a wee faint bit of it there. The pink that I'm using is always diluted with a white because crimson's, or you can go too far with crimson and it could ruin your picture because it's very hard to get it off because it's so strong, the pigments are so strong in it. And anything that you put on that turns out to be too strong, just use a bit of white over it. Just soften it back through. And just watch the don't lose for blues too much because that's quite a nice blue as well. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to try and work on here. And you can see where the light, the, the sun's come through there, it's off centre. As per normal, we're trying to make it off centre so that we're, we're not zooming right into the middle of the board all the time. So, what I tend to do is you can do this with your finger as well, or your brush. And I tend to just put, look, that's off the centre there, and it's going to be there. I can see that there, but you might not see it just yet. But what I'll do is, I'll take my smaller brush now and I'll take a little bit of white and a little bit of lemon and just while I've got that there so that I can see it I'm just going to sort of go round about it a little bit just so that you can see it and I can just make it that tiny bit bigger now that the lemon's in Now, I'll just clean my brush and get my base white on again and a little bit of the pink. I'll go back and work on this in a wee while but it's just to get some of these colours in and out. It doesn't matter if any of the colours kind of shoot through. And that's thick enough there to bring that back through. So I'll put a wee bit, this is a wee bit stronger now. Probably change into my bigger brush now. And the bigger brush just does it a little bit quicker. I'm going to take the pink off it now and they hold a lot of water the big brushes, so this is how you need plenty of tissue to soak it up. Too much water in it would dilute your colour, you would just lose what you're aiming for. Right, so I'm going to go with a little bit of this kind of turquoise colour now, so I'll show you how I do that. So I'm going to mix this one on the board just because there's paint already on the other now. So I'm going to mix a little bit of white, just a spot of lemon. Not a lot. And then just a little bit of serenium into that. And that gives you a nice kind of aqua colour, a wee bit more of the serenium in there. Right, so we'll just get this in as a base now, so that's sort of, we've got a wee bit of light to go there, so this is round about here, just above our marker that we made earlier. I see, because the white's on the board, all the colours just sit lovely on top of each other because the white's on there as a base. And I'll be overlapping those with some of the lines and lilacs and things as well. So there'll be a bit more of this colour sort of splashed about, shown through. So you're just always sort of cleaning your brush on the board and that. And while you're cleaning the brush, you're spreading some of that colour. It goes lovely sitting next to the pink as well. So there we go. No hard edges, just make sure you soften everything. Right. We can put as much as that back in there later if you like. 
Sometimes I wait till the picture's all done, the colours are finished here, the colours are finished there, and then sometimes I just go back and sort of balance up the colours a wee bit more. So can maybe go just a wee bit stronger on top of that? So I'm just going to go for a little bit more blue and a little bit more lemon here, minus the white this time. Sometimes when you put a slightly darker tone on top of a lighter tone, you always get a wee sort of sense of transparency. If it dries in a wee bit, you can just wet your brush or your finger and just smooth it in. But what I'm trying to do there is put a wee bit darker colour and some of the light colours straight through. It makes it look a wee bit more cloudy as well. Okay, so I'm going to clean my brush again. And this time I'm going to try and get a wee bit more of the lilacs made up round about where the light is there. So before I do the lilac, I always want to make sure my lemon creamy, it's not lemon, it's more sort of creamy colours, plenty of white mixed in with it round about there. Now so I'm going to use some white and just a little bit of lemon, watch it don't get the green in it this time. I'm just going to put some bases of this in. Now is that light, you could base most of this and then just put your sort of lavender colours on top of it. Just make sure that they're all pastel tones, so just make sure that nearly everything you do is basically white and, and your pastel colour will just come out nice and gentle. always top them up later on. This one here is quite light and I'm just going to drag a wee bit of that lemon. We can maybe introduce another little bit of lemon in there. And the white's still wet so I can blend it in a bit so it's not too strong the yellow. Just a little bit of that as well. I'm just checking all the time that I haven't left any little gaps of bare boards, so I just want to make sure. This is quite a nice stage to get to as well when it's kind of semi wet, it's not totally dry yet, and you just powder your brush on it, you get nice pieces of powdery clouds. It looks more blended in. Okay, so that'll do that a bit now. I'll clean my brush there, but what I'm going to do is maybe take a smaller brush and just work on a little bit more of this pinky tone round about the light. And then I'll go for my plan look. So just a wee bit more of this, as you can see that's quite strong. I'm just going to put a tiny bit of white under that. Because without the white it's quite dry and it just doesn't do anything for the colour. The colour just sort of soaks in because there's water in the colour. And it might look alright when it's wet, but when it dries in it goes quite bland. So the, the white keeps it on top, like a nice wee surface colour rather than soaking right into the grains of the board. Just colour my wee marker there as well. So we've used all our markers now, we don't need them now, we're home and dry, we're down at the bottom of the horizon now. So I'm just going to add uh, white a wee bit water in there, so I'm just going to soak it up a little bit more with thicker white, and then I'm going to put more of my blues on there. We don't really need it awfully white down there, but it's, it's just so much nicer to work with it with the white on it. Now, so again, I'm just going to use a little bit of Serenium. and on this blue I might start adding other colours into it as well. Now it's pretty wet for now, so I'm just going to make sure that my brush isn't too wet because I don't need more wet and top of wet, so I'm just going to make sure it's nice and dry. And I can add some yellows into this as well. I know where my horizon is going to be now, so I'm not bothered about disturbing that line at the moment. I can sort that later. Just 
basically I've taken my time around about that to make sure that dries in a little bit more for me. So again, nice powder. So much nicer than the white there. That would just be all drying out and it would look quite harsh without the white. If you see lines on it like that, that means it's just when you get impressions on it, that just means it's just a bit too wet yet. But that's okay. So I'm going to use my small brush here. I'm just going to put another tiny bit of lemon and white in that. Just at the top. So I want to keep those nicer. Turquoise colours going. As I said before, sometimes when you do the second picture again, you see things in it that you might want to change or make a little bit better than the first, so I'm quite liking this little bit of uh, turquoise that's going here, so we'll just sort of keep another little bit of it going. A bit wet, yeah. Very wet, yeah. And sometimes if it's too wet, you can take your tissue and just, on the surface of it, just dab it a little bit without disturbing anything. And that just takes the water off it. And then you can just, I'm just kind of rubbing on the surface of that. I'm not really actually taking it off. I'm just sort of blending the very surface of that. So that gives me a nice graduation from the light there into the darker tones. And that's dried up a lot better now. So over at the other side, I'm going to actually put some of my, I'll just clean this one brush and I'll put some of the pink. And what I'll do is I'll just kind of Dabble it round about there first. And it's going to hit the blue soon and it'll go sort of violet even if it hits the blue. So it's going violet already. And that's just quite a nice stage to get it to because it's almost dry, but it's still pliable enough to work with it. So that's quite a nice stage to get to as well. And just to keep it softer at the ends, you can keep a little bit of white just to make it a bit softer. So it doesn't look like a harsh white curl, it just looks as if it's blended in and it's meant to be like that. Now that's quite dry, so I'm just going to wet my finger a little bit. You can use your small brush and just wet your brush, but if you are going to use a brush, make sure it's a smaller brush that's not holding a lot of water because that could ruin, that could just dilute your colours that you've put on. That's how I tend to just use my finger because there's You've not, it's not like the brush you have, it needs the water sitting in your fingers. But you might not want to use your fingers, so just watch the control of water on your brushes. So I've just been tipping to around that so that it's not too strong to start with, and then I can build on it a little bit. I quite like the idea of the blue showing through, I don't want to block it. I can take a wee bit while like overlapping the pink up there now so that it's not just blinding a wee bit so I'm just going to, so I'm not soaking it, I'm just wetting it enough to move it. Okay so that's quite transparent, you can still, still see the other colours through there. Uh, and just to enhance each colour you can add a little bit of white just sort of between colours like that. And these two colours will enhance the light as well, so they act well together. Okay. So I might soften that back a wee bit as well, a little bit more white. And that just, in, white's a great thing for just interrupting between two colours. And it makes it a wee bit more lighter but it's not so heavy and blocked looking. Okay. Alright so we want to start calming some of these um, yellows and that down now so I was just letting it dry a little bit that's it dry now so you can just while I've still got the white on the brush just soften it. 
but you'll still see the lemon, so that's, that's good. So I'm going to go with a little bit of crimson and a little bit of the... Um, I might actually just go with the cerulean because that's okay for my look. A little bit more. I usually tend to go for a darker blue but these are okay. So that's a nice lilac but what I would do is put loads of white, not on all of it but just a wee bit at the side to give me a more of a sort of paler lilac there. So these ones weren't made up, these were just laid on top of one another, whereas these ones are a wee bit more so darker, so I'm going to add a little bit more light to that's quite strong here. And I never use all my palette colour up in case I want to go back and go a wee bit darker, so I just sort of work on the ends of it. If you keep mixing your colour on the same bit all the time, you're just going around in circles and you'll end up with mud. Keep moving away from the colour that you've mixed so that you get what you want. I quite like them being a wee bit darker because I can introduce wee bits of white on them as well. So my brush again is fairly dry and it lets me just sort of tiptoe in and out the lights and the lights will just pierce through. So when you put a dark colour on the light underneath just pierce through so it gives you quite a nice effect. Uh, I'm going to go a little bit more white again, so I'm going a bit paler again here. And I'm just taking that right over there until it disappears. There's quite a lot of colour still on the brush, so I'm just going to clean it completely and go back in another little bit of light. Uh, I can 
and soften that on a little bit. That's what I mean about I was saying I can just add a little bit more light to the end. So it's okay that they're a bit darker. Okay, I might just get a tiny bit in between the light and the dark there and just sort of overlap the top of it so it shows off the light a little bit more. The more you kind of block in these bits, the more this light will shine out. Right, <clears throat> so I'm just going to clean my brush now in fact I'm going to just use a smaller brush. This is a flat brush now and I'm just going to enhance a little bit more. This is just quite a little spot of lemon that you can have a see. Okay. Right, so we're going to try and, I'm quite happy now with the bottom of the sky, so I'm going to now go into the horizon line. But I was just wetting it there and it was tidying up a little bit, so it's looking a wee bit sharper, but what I'll do now is I'll just show you an easier way to do that. So if you use your big brush, um, I'm just going to use a mixture of my blues. I'm going to use my Serenium and my Fano Blue, because that gives a wee sort of extra turquoise tone, kind of aqua tone in it. And make sure there's a little bit of water on it, because that gives you a straighter line if it's a wee bit more moist. So what I'm going to do is just go right along here and I'll show you how to make this straight. So I'm not wanting to get an accurate straight line using this thicker brush. And it's better to use a thicker brush because if you use this, this smaller brush, you just end up footing about trying to get in and out and back and forward. Whereas if you use this big brush, you get a better sweep out. So I'll just show you. So this will be kind of thick and maybe untidy to start with, but at least it's easier to tidy up. Now it's a little bit dry there, so just make sure it's wet enough. Make sure your brush is moist enough. And just go back and forward. And I'll just show you an easy way to double check that that line is straight. I'm not bothered about how thick it is at the moment, as long as it doesn't go over my sky. I can tidy up underneath it, no problem. So I'm just going to see the brush will split a little bit down there, so that's fine. So just to make sure that I've got a straight line there, and there's a wee bit I can see that's almost missing. That's because my brush is a bit wet. It's kind of missing wee bits. But this is better than using a small brush and going back and forward all the time. You try and get it straight. So here's what I would do to make sure it's straight. This is my easel here. Even if it's on a table edge or whatever, you just use something to lean on. Take the top of your brush to the top of the horizon line like that and just hold your finger on the brush there and run it right along so the brush can't move up or down because I'm holding the bottom of it with my finger and I'm just making sure that it's straight all along and I can see just about that point there's a wee hairline I need to fill in I think that was just because the brush was a bit too wet there but that's okay, I can see that and there's a tiny wee speck there just to over the line and that's fine but on the whole, that's the same all the way. I don't have a squinty line, so that's that's a good thing. So what I'm going to do is just fill in this wee bit that I did see there with a bit more of my turquoise at the top. There you go, that's that bit in. And then I'll go to the darker blue with the small brush now and just fill in that tiny wee bit there. Still a wee bit watery. Uh, I'll try and go a wee bit stronger without water on it this time. And I'm still steadying my wrist. You need to have your wrist nice and steady, and you can even turn your brush that way. So a wee bit wet yet. I'm just letting that a wee bit, I'll just dry my brush and just fill that in a little bit more. So I can turn my brush that way now because it's a wee bit thicker cream. So that's that, that's that bit filled in. So what I can do now is, is just put white on my brush with a little bit of Serenium and just go right across there. And that, just get my brush a tiny bit, not too much because we don't want it running. And we're just going to just gently, because it's quite wet, and just run right across here without going over the top of the line. the white under there and that white gives me a nice base for my uh, serenium to 
stand out and talk about. At the time I pounded all this in my horizon line, I can define it a wee bit more and bring this right up. And again, just lean your wrist on something there and just bring it right up. Doesn't need to be perfect now because you've already made the line. Okay, and uh, I'm just going in with more white and more serenium blue. I'm just going to fill a bit more of that in. And I'm just going to let the serenium work itself on top of the white to let the sort of acro tones come up, but I might put a tiny bit of lemon in it too, just to get get a wee bit more of these tones coming back through the show. Now the other thing is as well, I need another wee marker on this because this is us down the bottom half of the picture now and if I make a wee halfway line on that, that's where my my verge of the sea just ends there in the grass line sort of comes there. So I'm just going to half this, just give myself a wee marker there. The grass will go on the top of it but it's just so that I've left a little allowance here for the light. So, I'll put some white on, but I'll put it up here first because it'll still show as blue because that blue is wet and then I'll put more white in there so I'll still get a wee bit of space in there to put my lighter bit up for sure. So, you find when you're using a bigger brush like this too, it blends much better and you don't have to keep going back and filling in bits, it's, you've already done it while it's wet. Okay, so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to mix a tiny, just a tiny bit more of this colour with the lemon and a little bit of the serenium blue. Now that's quite strong so I can add some white into that and just water it down a little bit. All I want is just a tiny bit more lemon I think. And um, we'll just go for a little bit more of this. And I'm just really exaggerating at this time because I've exaggerated this a wee bit more as well. So every time you put a wee bit of lemon, the kind of aqua tone in there, it gives you that wee sense of transparency in the water as it goes kind of near the shore. And just to enhance that and bring that up a little bit more. It's a wee bit darker this side, so I'm really just looking for it more to be there where the light shines. Maybe even just go in with a tiny wee bit more lemon. If it goes too strong, you can just weaken it with white. So sometimes I just, as I say, it's just white and you can put anything on it and you can weaken it down or build it up. So you can't really go wrong. Okay, so I'm going to now go in with a wee bit more of the, I've not took the white off my brush, I still get a wee bit white on it, but that's a good base. And I'll use a bit of fallow. So that's my serenium and my fallow blue there, or just your darkest blue that you've got there. And I'm just going to go back up here at the top. It might be still a wee bit damp, but that's okay. And I want to bring it right on the horizon line there and just sweep it in and start building it a wee bit darker at this side. And it's still white, so you can see the white still running through it, but that's okay. So I'm still using my two colours so that I get that nice balance of all the turquoise and the aqua blues working. Now once I've used most of it up there, I can just sweep it from end to end like that. And we just use a tiny wee bit more lemon running through here. The brush is really dry, it just keeps blending them together and that's how they work. I'm just going to use a tiny wee bit more water, not much, and a little bit of lemon. because I don't want to really be peeling it anymore. I just want to sort of take some of the water off of here and the white and just go back with a tiny bit more of the serenium and the fallow. The fallow is just a bit stronger. I'm 
just want to get a nice sweep of this without making it too thick. Quite happy with that. This picture was taken from a photograph, I can't actually remember where it was, but um, they always come out a bit pale on the photograph, so you can strengthen the colours as much as you want and you can add some little, little bits of texture in the water like that if you like. What I'm doing now, I'm just feathering the top of it. But I quite like some of the green lines shown through there, so it's just going to be that. And I should put a bit of this still on my brush. I'm just going to sort of do a couple of green lines across there and I can work in between them and use them for little bits of ripples in the water. So I can bring a tiny bit more of that through there, but it's a wee bit wet now. My grass will probably go over most of it anyway, but um, just kind of bring a couple of bits of the glue through it now. Now, I would want to clean my brush, and there's two ways you can do this. There's a, I'm going to put some wee bits of hang right there, but sometimes I prefer it to dry out and then just give me a dry brush for that later on because if I do it right now it might just merge into it. But if you use your brush like that, nice and dry, and it's all nice and opened like that, you can put a bit of white on there and just kind of gliss it over, even, even these wee bits, and it gives you those wee kind of sparkles in water. I'll try a little bit but it's a bit wet now, but just to show you the idea. So there's a couple of wee bits of so just maybe get a dry bit of paper and just kind of take the excess off it, like that. And then just kind of... There's a wee bit of this in the last picture there. Same sort of idea. Just wee sort of sparkles. That's a wee bit wet there, but I would let it dry. But sometimes it's just enough. But remember, the light's coming from here, so it'll be really nice to get it on there when it's drying out a little bit. And what you can do is you don't have to keep all of them. You can just take your tissue at the very top of them and just kind of move them in a little bit. And that should be enough. Right, the bottom part of the picture, I'm just going to go straight in and make a dark base first. And then pull up all our colours. So I'm going to go in with some brown and some green, maybe a bit of blue, anything that's dark than I uh, put a bit more water in my brush. And uh, basically I'm going to go in with a dark base right down the bottom because you won't, you won't get white on the ground, so just get it as dark as I can. Blues, blue and brown gives you almost a kind of blacky skin, so we want it as dark as we can down the bottom. And some of them get dried up as well. So round about here, it's not the end of the shore because this is raised, this bit of the ground is raised up and you're just seeing the sea sort of down below, so you're not actually right on the beach. But there's a little verge there where it sort of ends. It doesn't need to be perfect because you're not going really to see much of it with the, the grasses anyway, but it's just to give you an end in there. And I want some of the wee shadows to come down like that as well because that'll be nice through my grasses. Your grasses work out better if you've got a wee bit of shadow in between them. Like that as well. It was one of the things that I liked about it was that there's lots of nice reflections of some of these blues coming through here. So we'll go straight in now with the palette knife. And I usually use a palette knife with a wee step on it, it gives you a little bit more flexibility, but everybody's got their own wee favourite palette knife that they like to use. So I'm going to just go straight in now and I'm going to take some green, some yellow. 
and a little bit of white just to now, just to see what we get. And I'm going to leave some spaces for white as well. So I'm just going to take that a bit there. If I'm lucky enough, some of the dark will come through as well. And I'm going to leave some spaces for some blues, but I'm just trying to get some of this in there. So you're putting it on quite heavy there, and then different lengths you're pulling it. I think I did something that with the brush and I found it was just too smooth, so I much prefer the palette knife to do this. So just to make sure, I'm going to use a wee bit of this up before I put a wee bit of shadow. We can do some at the top like that, and just wee sharp bits like that, and if some of that's still wet, right, that's good. So I wanted to use some of that up before I went into some brown and blue, that's my darker stuff really dark there and what I want to do is just make sure that I've got enough dark going through some of them. Some of these have probably done this before. Uh, so there they are. Uh, it's just more instant with a palette knife. So I'm just going to get a few more wee darks kind of wet there first. So they're best being wet. And then I'll put some white stuff on it. Just before I do anything like that, I'm going to just clean this and I want a nice big pale blue. So again, that's going to be white with a bit of my serenium. And I want to be able to notice it. So it's just wee bits in between. Like this sort of thing. And I don't have to use all of it, I'm just going to push straight on. left so I might pull a wee bit just shooting through that one there and I've got enough space to bring up some of my darks at the bottom so I'm going to interrupt this one here with a wee bit of the blue I'm going kind of aqua now but that's fine that's actually perfect quite like that because it reflects the green and the blue it doesn't look too patchy in Go straight up the way and then you can go across the way like that. But all the best if you can interrupt them like that. So I'm going to get a few more blues on it first and then I'll go straight into some of the darks and disguise some of the blues. So the blues are sort of coming in between like this kind of thing. Yep, I like that one. And you want to do some that's really big. If you want to do really big ones, put it on a bit chunkier drag it a bit more and bring some of them up to the top just a little bit like that and that's where you get a little bit more height on some of them. See I'm covering some of that water already but that's fine. Okay, put a bit more of that blue. Last of my blue, and get a wee bit more. You can put a wee bit more white in it. The green goes in it, that's absolutely fine. So I'm going to just clean that off and get a bit more of the nice bright greens and the yellows. So here we go, the big patches that's in between. I'm just going to slap it on the bottom to begin with and then just pull it Some of the dark because it gives a nice bit of depth at the bottom as well. A bit more there. 
and get them at different levels that they're not all just sitting on a roll. I want to show you that blue, I don't want to hide that, so I'm going to sort of dry them and cut them. I'm going to put more of the green there. I'm going to put some of the green that way this time. The paint's quite wet, so when you're scraping it, sometimes it can actually just scrape through the dry board. And we're nearly done, so just another couple of bits there and there. That's quite thick. Just one or two there for those. Now, so that they don't look like they're all in a row, I want a wee bit of height here. So I'll just take some there, you can add a bit of white here for a bit of light as well. That's a nice bright green. I think it's called light green, actually. And I just want a little bit sitting there, quite chunky. Keep my blue, I want to show you that nice blue, because that's what to look quite good at. Put them up high like that, we'll get a bit more depth out of them. And I'm just going to add a couple of little bits of brown just for a bit of texture coming through the summer. So what you do is when you put that on, you sort of lie it down a wee bit flat first and then pull it so that you're actually getting it on the board like that and then pull it. And what we want to do Keep it nice at the bottom. Let's just make sure that it's leave it up and down, it's not all sand on a roll. So if you keep running on and on that, you can go back later on and tidy it up and add more to it. Uh, so there we are. I was gonna touch up my bits of the sky in between there as well, so you might notice I've done that. And you can sharpen some of these up as well. You can even take your small brush and um, just go in with little bits as well. And just kind of, it's a wee bit wet now, but if you get it in nice and sharp like that, a wee bit light, it'll just look like the, the light reflecting on them. Some nice green ones as well. It's good to take up some of the horizon line as well. It gives you a sense of this one up higher than the rest. Um, there might be a couple of wee bits that I was saying to you earlier about going back and putting some white wee sparkles on that. Again, probably a sweet to get this dry, but I'll just go in with a little tiny bit now. So just have your brush nice and spaced out. And a couple of let's put green on that. I don't mind blue but not green on this bit. Um, see what we get there, it might be a little bit wet. So that's just a couple of wee bits like that that you can You sort of dot them on and then drag them on. But I'd let that dry first because you don't want to go in too much. We'll pick these up and we'll just end up with green there. What I'm going to do, just to freshen that just a tiny wee bit off, because it should be just a wee bit lighter in there anyway. And um, what I'll do with that is, just take my brush. And just kind of smooth that off a little bit. And just finish it off a little bit so you're blue. Okay. 
and I'll pack up the blue to soften that and then the green should still show as well. I'm just hand lighting on the brush now so I'm just kind of smoothing it out. But it just, it'll just end up with like wee bits of texture on there. So that green light, so that's what I want to do. I would just use my palette knife now and just kind of hold that a couple of pieces. 